pull. What is up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve. And today I'm at the beautiful ranges at Oakfield in Thomasville, Georgia. Amazing place. It feels so great to get out of Minnesota, get some warmer weather. We're taking a look at this entry level trap gun. It is called the Stoger the Grand. Just rolls right off the tongue. The Stoger the Grand. Very entry level, very low dollar trap gun. We're gonna see if it's worth the money today. You ready? Let's go. taking a look at the Grand. My first question is, why didn't they just call it Grand? Stoger Grand. Stoger the Grand? Anyways, trap shooting has become really huge, especially in my home state of Minnesota. And a lot of kids need a gun that's gonna fit them, work for them, that's specific for trap. This gun right here is really targeted, I feel like, at that entry level shooter. It's got an MSRP of $679. I, of course, got it from my favorite sporting good retailer, for less than that, but $679, that's, that's cheap for a trap gun. Is it worth even spending that? Today I'm gonna take a good look and figure out if this is a good place for youth shooters or anyone getting into trap to start. First thing we're gonna do is take a look at the specs of this shotgun. I already mentioned the MSRP 679. There is only one standard option for this gun. It is 12 gauge, three inch chamber, 30 inch barrel. There are no other options when it comes to the Grand. The Grand comes in at 9.1 pounds, so it is a heavier gun. A lot of other trap guns are more in that eight pound range. Now it's not a bad thing if your trap gun is heavier. A heavier gun should help you with recoil, but we're gonna be looking at that in just a minute. When you look at the stock, it has a 14 and a half inch length of pull. So I'm kind of thinking for a lot of kids that might be a little bit long. One thing I do like about this gun is that it has an adjustable comb. You can raise or lower the comb. You cannot move left or right. When I picked up this gun and started mounting it, it was extremely low for me. I couldn't even see the rib. I have it almost all the way up and it's just about perfect. I wouldn't say it is perfect, but good enough for this review. The Grand comes with three flush mounted chokes, modified, improved, modified, and full. I was really hoping I had a Carlson's choke that would fit this. I don't, so I'm stuck shooting these stock chokes. One last thing when we talk about specs that you can't find on a manufacturer's website, is the trigger. I always like to test out the trigger. Just see first how it feels dry firing. So I've got a little bit heavier trigger. Not a lot of pre-travel. It's really stiff just until it breaks. Really no sponginess pre-travel. Let's see what this comes out on on the trigger scale which I always keep in my back pocket for just such an occasion. I'm gonna guess it's seven pounds, over seven pounds. Seven pounds, four ounces. That, not a bad guess, huh? Pretty close, I'm getting good at this thing. Let's give it one more pull. Seven pounds, 15.3 ounces. Let's do one more. Get a good average here. Seven pounds, 1.9 ounces. We're in that seven pound range is where we're coming out as far as trigger pull. Doesn't surprise me. It's a sub $700 break action shotgun. So it's kind of what you would expect. Honestly, now we're gonna take a quick look at the ergonomics of this shotgun. That's the feel, the function, how it all operates. First thing I notice when I look at this gun is the checkering is not great. It's not great. It's kind of some of the worst checkering that I've seen, honestly. I mean, you can barely tell there is checkering when you hold on to it. When I just hold this gun mounted up, it actually doesn't feel terrible. I feel like there's a slight palm swell which I absolutely like. My finger falls in a very good spot. There's no adjustability as far as trigger, of course. So my finger falls in a good spot in the trigger. When I shoot trap and a lot of clay disciplines, I like to point my finger. And so I always like a forend that allows me to do that. If I put my thumb up here, this finger here, nothing fancy about it, but it feels pretty good in the hands, to be honest with you. As far as balance, it's a little rear heavy maybe. I mean, it's pretty well balanced. Sometimes I like a clay shooting gun to be a little bit more forward, a little heavier in the barrels, slows my swing down. Definitely rearward balanced. So I don't know if that I'm in love with the balance of this shotgun. It's recoil pad, just a standard hard rubber pad. We'll look at this in recoil and reliability, but I'm pretty sure I'd put a Falcon Strike recoil reduction system on it. I wouldn't necessarily call it a high rib. It's, it's greater than a stepped up rib, but it's not your traditional high rib, but there is 
a raised rib on this gun, huge red fiber optic on here, which if you look at Stoger's marketing material, they say it's so you can acquire the target quickly. I don't know, I, I would probably take that off, to be honest with you. When you pre-mount in trap, it's very easy for your eyes to fixate on this red fiber. In reality, you want your eyes focused beyond the trap house. Your eyes will pick up a target easier if you're focused beyond it, rather than if you're focused shallow, right? If you're focused on this red dot, then a clay comes up, you're already behind the game. Top lever opens up fairly easy. It's a bit stiff, it's a newer gun. It closes really smooth though. One thing I did notice about this gun in my warm up rounds is there's some type of rattle inside the action. And I don't know what that is. It doesn't happen when it's broke open. I don't like rattles, even if it's okay. I mean, it makes it sound cheap and chintzy. This is a steel receiver, obviously no barrel selector, but just a top tang safety as you would expect on a brake action. But enough talking about this gun. Let's shoot a little bit. I'm gonna look at recoil, reliability, start to really get a feel for this gun. We might as well shoot at a target. Pull. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. Where was my focus? Thinking about recoil, not thinking about the clay. That's why it's challenging to shoot targets and look at recoil, because you gotta focus on one element of it. Let's try that again. Pull. You know, recoil, I have shot about 25, 30 shells through this gun so far, and I'm gonna say my shoulder is hurting. Just those individual shots, it doesn't feel like it is hurting. Let's do one more. Pull. I can say 25, 30 rounds in, my shoulder's hurting a little bit. Part of that can be this gun doesn't fit me perfectly. I don't have it perfectly dialed in. It's not hitting my shoulder pocket quite how it should. In fact, I got some out on the shoulder here. For a nine pound gun, I would think it would have less recoil. I am shooting ounce and an eighth, two and three quarter, 1145 feet per second. So with these lighter loads, I'm surprised how much recoil there actually is. As far as reliability, there's not a lot to look at here. I just need to break one more clay. Pull. There is an extractor that lifts the shell. There is no ejector on this shotgun, so heads up, and that's okay. Sometimes it's nice to not have your shells flying out. I'm surprised it has as much recoil as it does, to be honest with you. It's not terrible, it's manageable, but I'm thinking more kid aspect here. It's more recoil than I would like a young person to be experiencing on a nine pound gun that might be a little bit heavy for them to hold. Generally, the heavier the gun, all else equal, the less perceived recoil. So that's about all I gotta say on recoil and reliability. I think this gun will hold up well over time. It's not the prettiest gun, the fanciest gun. I think it's got pretty solid construction. It will hold up, but don't take my word for it. If you have the grand, comment down below. Let us know how it's worked for you, how it's held up over time, because you guys are the true testament. I don't get to shoot tens of thousands of rounds through every gun, so I really appreciate the comments down below. I'm always just fascinated and so pleased when you guys all chime in and share your experiences as well, because I think when we all do that together, we all grow together. Now we're just gonna take a quick look at quality of build. I don't have a lot to say here. When it comes to the finishes, uh, we're just very standard grade wood. The checkering's low grade. The finish is just a blued finish. Nothing fancy about the finish at all. As far as quality of build, you know, a lot of rounds is gonna be the test of time. But from what I noticed, I think the quality of build is okay for the price point. It's good for the price point, I should say. Like, I'm not gonna be as picky on this as I would a $3,000 gun. Let's break this apart quick and just see what we're working with inside. This has a push lever, forend comes off. Let's take a look inside. Nothing fancy about it, but nothing stands out that says, hey, this isn't gonna last. Chunk, that's what I'm hearing right there. Slap it back together. Goes back together nicely. Don't like that rattle. Anyways, quality of build, it's what you'd expect for a sub $700 brake action shotgun. I'm not gonna rip on it too hard. I don't fall in love looking at it, that's for sure. We gotta shoot around a trap with this gun. We gotta shoot 25 rounds, see how well I can do. You don't gotta watch the whole thing. We'll summarize it, but I'm gonna get to shooting, see what kind of score I can put together. Oh. I always like to start with a make, that feels good. Pull.
Moving on over. Pull. I missed. That's my second miss. Both misses have been over the top. This does shoot a little high. You don't need to come across the targets, that's for sure. Pull. Wow. Pull. Ooh, that was not so good back there. I missed three on that last post. Pull. Pull. Ooh. This maybe doesn't shoot as high as I thought. I'm starting to get the feel. Pull. 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 It was going so well too. Started out really rocky with this gun, especially post number two. I think I missed four out of five birds. Ended pretty strong. But here's what I noticed shooting this gun. The birds I missed, my hands were moving too fast and I swung over the birds. Now I think a big part of that is, one, I'm not fully used to the gun. It takes a while, there's always a learning curve. So I'm not gonna bash the gun for that. But the front end being light, the balance being rearward, the barrel's a little whippy. I wish the barrel was heavier, I could slow it down just a little bit. At first I thought this gun was shooting high but actually it was just me pulling across the targets too fast. Uh, I would be interested to get this on a patterning board. I don't think it shoots a 70-30. I think it's maybe a 60-40. So that's just a quick observation after shooting. The other big observation that I'm picking up, my shoulder hurts. I'm kind of tired of shooting this gun. I like that it's a heavier gun. I wish the weight was more forward. I wish it had less recoil but you're looking at a sub $700 price point, a trap gun that gets you into the sport. You can always upgrade, you can always trade later. I'm not gonna try to talk you into this. I'm not gonna try to talk you out of this. This is what it is. It is the Stoger The Grand, and it's less than $700, dedicated trap gun. I hope I gave you a good thorough look at this shotgun, my thoughts on it. Would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.